You know, it's actually been a while since I did a pork butt. I think it's been, I don't know, four or five months. I don't even remember when the last video that I did with a whole pork butt was. This one today though, if you look, is boneless. And so this is what happens when you get a boneless one. The bones cut out and you get these sort of separated pieces, but it's not a problem. They're gonna cook the same as a pork butt, maybe a little quicker, but generally not that much quicker. First step though, is we're gonna get this seasoned up because this is gonna sit in the refrigerator overnight, absorbing these seasonings. And then tomorrow we're gonna to smoke it up out of the grill. And the rub I'm using today is Cimarron Doc's Sweet Rib Rub and Barbecue Seasoning. So we're just gonna get a good coating on here. I don't need a binder. There's a good amount of surface moisture. And we will open it up and get it on the inside too. Take advantage of this. And I have it on a rack in my baking sheet here because I wanna keep it up off the surface. There will be some moisture that comes out of this and I don't want it to sit in that pooled moisture. And you can see I'm touching the shaker after touching the pork. That's because I wrap it. Did a video on this little thing that I do where I wrap the shaker with some plastic wrap. Makes cleanup a lot easier and a lot more sanitary. And I'm not doing any extra trimming here today. We're not taking off any more fat. There are a couple good pieces of fat on here, but I'm not worried about that. This really is my preferred way to do large cuts of meat is to season them the day before if possible. Not 100% necessary, but I like to do it. I'm happy with that. This is going in the refrigerator overnight and tomorrow out at the grill, we'll get this on there. But we have one more thing to do today and that's make some sauce. So for the sauce today, I'm gonna be making it out here on my induction burner just so it's a little easier to see. And this has a fan, so you might hear the fan going as we start to heat up our ingredients. We're starting with a cup of water. To this, I'm gonna add two cups of distilled white vinegar and two cups of apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna turn the heat on my induction burner to probably power level four or five, and we're gonna get this to a low boil. And this is gonna be a sauce that's loosely based on an Eastern North Carolina vinegar-based barbecue sauce. I really love those. I especially love that sauce with pulled pork, which is what we're gonna be making tomorrow is pulled pork. And the reason I'm doing this today is to give it a chance to sort of come together in flavor in the refrigerator overnight, just like we're letting the pork butts soak in those seasonings. All right, we are just starting to boil here. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my other ingredients, but first I wanna turn this to about power level four. First up is a teaspoon of uh, coarsely ground black pepper, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of dried mustard, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of red pepper flakes. I'm using a smoky red pepper flake from Flatiron Pepper Company. Five tablespoons of sugar. I'm using turbinado sugar. Whisk this in here a bit. I'm also gonna add three tablespoons of hot sauce. I'm using Teach's Beard from Spice Dog Provisions. One, two, three. I'm gonna whisk this, make sure everything's dissolved. I'm gonna turn my power off now. I'm just gonna let this cool down, and as soon as it's kind of closer to room temperature, I'm gonna put it in some glass jars into the refrigerator, and it'll be ready for tomorrow. All right, the Lone Star Grills is up to temp. I'm shooting for somewhere around 275 today. Between 250 and 300, I'll be happy with that. I've got hickory wood in the firebox and I've got maybe three quarters of a gallon of water in the cook chamber. Just add a little bit of extra moisture. It's gonna be kind of a dry day. So let's go ahead and get this pork butt on. Now I'm not gonna be using an internal temperature probe today. I will be checking for temperature at certain intervals. I'll start checking after about two hours. That's when we'll also see if we need a spritz. And then I'll check about every hour after that until we get around that stall range of 160. And at that point, we'll wrap it. So I'll bring you back here in a couple hours.
So we've been going two hours now. We're gonna check these in a second, but I wanna cover something. These are boneless pork butts, as you know, when you saw that we were rubbing them, bones been removed. So I could have tied these up to have a more uniform shape, but in this, it really doesn't matter. They're gonna be shredded and they're gonna cook until they're tender. So we're good doing it this way. If you want a more uniform shape as you're cooking it, you can go ahead and tie it up with some cooking twine. No problem with that at all. But let's give these a look. Those are looking just fantastic. Just beautiful color on those right now, sort of that mahogany stage. Let's go ahead and just check some temperatures here. Let's see. So that right there is showing about 120. That's showing 110. So we've still got a good amount of time to go. I'm gonna close this up, let these keep going. Probably check them in another two hours, see how we're doing. And just as a little wood update, to this point I've added two splits of wood in addition to the two that I start with. That's how I would start this. Have two splits going to get a bed of coals, and then I'll just add a split, usually about every hour. It's not a cold day today at all, so we're not fighting any external temperatures. It's just gonna be a good cook. So I'll see you back here in about two hours. All right, we've been going a total of four hours now. We're gonna go ahead and check these for temperature, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna wrap them at this point. I think the color's gonna be good, so let's see. Oh yeah, those are looking good. Let's get a temp check here and see. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that's showing 158 right there, and it's actually feeling, you no, know, there's resistance still, but there is some good tenderness in there. And I'm happy with the color, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these in butcher paper, and they're gonna go right back on here. I could take them inside, put them in the oven, let them finish there, but it's a nice day outside, and I like sitting by the smoker. And for this final stage of the cook, I am gonna put an internal temperature probe in. So I'm gonna close this up, let these finish until we get close to that 200 to 205, and then we'll check for tenderness. So we just hit 200 degrees internal after almost exactly eight hours. Let's check this for tenderness. I'm gonna go in over here. Yeah, that's pretty tender. Let's check this one. You get through the paper, actually, it's easier here. That is very tender. Tender, tender. Yeah, I don't need to keep punching holes in this. These are done. Now these are gonna go into a foil pan covered with foil and they're gonna rest for an hour and then we're gonna go ahead and shred them and make this Carolina style pulled pork. So I went ahead and pulled one of the pork butts out of its paper wrapper after an hour rest, and here it is, just beautiful color on this. There's no bone to pull out of this because it is a boneless pork butt. So let's just start shredding it. Let's see how we did. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's tender. I would say that turned out great. Oh, look at that bark. Really nice here. Man, kind of do miss the satisfaction of pulling that you know, the pork bone out of there, but this just turned out great. Nice and moist, you can just see all the moisture in there. This is gonna make some terrific pulled pork. If there's any big chunky pieces of fat, I usually just toss them to the side. We'll be adding some of our Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce to a portion of this in just a minute. And as I think I said at the beginning of this video, this is gonna be Eastern North Carolina-ish. I think I got close. It's probably not gonna be exact to how someone in North Carolina making this specific barbecue sauce would do it and this pulled pork, but you know, I'm not there. I'm trying to do it as good as I can and I think it's gonna taste great. So let's go ahead and get some of this pulled pork into a bowl, sauce it up and build a sandwich. So I have some of the sauce I made yesterday and here is some of the pulled pork in a bowl. I'm just gonna add some sauce, mix this up so we can build this sandwich. Let's get this all mixed up in here. And I guess really you can put as much sauce as you want on it and get a lot of that nice vinegary flavor with some of that heat in there from the hot sauce and from the red pepper flakes. Could even pour more on the sandwich if you want. 
That's looking good. Let's go ahead and build this. So I have a bun here. I've gone ahead and toasted both the bottom and the top. I'm just going to build this thing. And I'm really only going to add some pickles to this. I know you can add a lot more. Some people put coleslaw. That would be good, but you know what? I think pickles are going to be just fine with this. Yeah, we're really going to pile some on here. And you know, I think I do want to add a little bit more of that sauce on here. Let it really soak in. Get some pickles on here. Not a lot, just a few. And go ahead and crown this. There it is, my take on an Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce on Carolina style pulled pork. I'm ready to dive in. There is no non-messy way to do this and I don't care. The pork is great, but that vinegar based sauce, that's the star here. I don't know how many ways to say it. I love this, I love that pulled pork, but I really, really love that sauce. Oh my.